It's Monday. It's July 4th. And the word of the day is gawky, <laughs> which means nervously awkward and ungainly and heath-like. Used in a sentence, apparently gawky is a common enough fucking word for the assholes at Wordle, <laughs> but they won't use words like words in their answer dictionary because plurals aren't real. I just, I, well, they follow that up with egret. Motherfuckers, they got me considering, like, Kavass and Zynab and shit now. <laughs> okay, question. If Heath and Noah use every computer they get their hands on until they get the Wordle right, does that count as a DDoS attack? I'm asking for a very nervous <laughs> that, lawyer. That's just cheating. You can't do that. <laughs> I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from America's Far Center, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode... Rudy Giuliani hires Jesse Smollett as a very specific acting coach. Florida will take all your you-couldn't-be-any-stupider jibes as a challenge. And Donald Trump has a really fun limo ride with Tall Tyler and Sarah Huckabee Sanders. <laughs> but first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, no illusions, and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, uh, ha- happy 4th of July, y- USA? USA? D- does it count if USA. we do it as a funeral dirge? Right? Like, USA, USA. <laughs> That's how it feels yeah. now. Well, That's what now, I was feeling. To be fair, ignoring safety regulations and common sense to and courteously blow shit up is a pretty spot on celebration of Americanness, though. That's true. Right? That's true. It sure is. In our lead story tonight, in. Unborn on the 4th of July news. Fantastic. Happy Independence Day to all the fetuses out there. Congrats on overtaking people with a uterus in terms of personhood in 13 states, Uh. with a bunch more states to come. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the overturning of Roe v. Wade is horrible for a litany of reasons, and I'm sure we've all been yelling about those reasons for a while now. But the one I want to focus on right now is the concept behind the anti-choice argument in that original case in 1973, the idea of fetal personhood. As it now stands, a state is allowed to define personhood to include a mass of undifferentiated cells that's very literally just a piece of another human body, like an actual human body that's alive. And the state can prioritize the rights of that tiny little mass over the rights of the aforementioned actual human being according to the supreme court and the current state of american constitutional law a a corporation is a fetus and a fetus is a corporation (laughs) and all those things are people do you hear yourselves that's fucking insane what is happening yeah people with uteruses though not so much like, if we're lucky, maybe we can duck season, rabbit season the SCOTUS into giving them corporate hood or something. I just that, That's the most <laughs> we can even hold out for now. Okay. Guys, that's actually a great idea, though. We just need to remind Republicans that fetuses don't pay taxes and they'll stop caring about them instantly. Right? There'll be abortion vending machines on every corner by Wednesday. <laughs> we fixed it. <sighs> yeah. So let's talk about the ramifications of calling a fetus a person legally. And I found a great examination of this topic by Professor Carlos Chapman from the Washington and Lee University School of Law. I want to slap really good the books stuff. out of your hands so hard right now. <laughs> I'm just shaking. I'm shaking. She's the nerd. Well, no, I'm a nerd too. Oh, it's, it's a great source. I'm citing my awesome source, Carlos Chapman. One angle she mentioned was the concept of deportation. Right. If a fetus is a person, the question obviously arises. <laughs> Can a pregnant immigrant, for example, who conceived a child in the U.S., be deported? Because that would mean we're also deporting a full-fledged American citizen. And something tells me Republicans are going to have trouble being consistent on that one. Right. Well, so, okay, you can still deport them, but you have to yank them out of the country so fast they leave behind the fetus. Like, you ever seen that tablecloth trick? <laughs> See, I was picturing a <laughs> bungee jumping situation. You oh, know, well, or, they- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or like the fetus through a hole in a fence, like one of those puzzles. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, Chapman also mentioned the question of law enforcement of a pregnant person. Another obvious one. According to the Constitution... You can't put a person in jail without giving them a trial and the opportunity to confront their accusers. And as adorable as it might be, that's going to be tricky with a fetus to have the trial. So in every state where a fetus is considered a person, it's a violation of the due process clause of the 14th Amendment to put a pregnant person in jail because you're also incarcerating a second whole person, according to that state, who never committed a crime and never got a trial. 
Yeah, everyone picturing a baby doing the freedom walk the second he's born now, right? Just carving his name next to Lefty in the pillar. <laughs> you talking about Mickey from Shawshank? Yes, exactly, Mickey. <laughs> okay, every fetus has the voice of Morgan Freeman as a narration <laughs> in my head now. Mommy, mommy, wah, wah. <laughs> you should have seen this tube. I had to crawl through to get my freedom. Yeah. <laughs> Don't touch so- the top of my head or I'll die. <laughs> I'm married right. my granddaughter. Ah, uh, we're laughing, but it's the story. We yeah, gotta go back stuff, to the story. Yeah. We gotta go back to the story. So everything I was just talking about before, it's not just theoretical. We know what this looks like in other countries. For example, in Ireland, where fetal personhood was the law of the land until 2018. In Ireland, pregnant people literally died because a medical intervention would have potentially harmed a fetus in the head of the pro-life doctor. That same thing has happened in Poland. Pregnant people with cancer have been denied chemotherapy yeah. because it would violate the rights of a tiny little body part smaller than the cancer. And people died from that. And we're already seeing this insanity taken even further here in the U.S. Anti-choice bounty laws have been proposed in places like Texas and Missouri. These would allow people to sue anyone who helps a resident get an abortion even in a different state. And that narc gets a literal bounty reward of money up to $10,000 in one proposal. Now, in fairness, there is a legal precedent in this country for that sort of thing. But um, it's called the Fugitive Slave Act of 1793. Jesus Christ. And well, okay, but so compared to some of Alito's citations in this debacle, that's downright topical. Also, <laughs> Keith, be cool. We are two bad legal takes away from my coming true legally okay, no, okay. No, so no. yeah here we are roe v wade is overturned it happened now what so obviously we're already seeing protests and rallies and fundraisers to help the victims of our horrible theocracy and some of those fundraisers have a competition element and they get rigged by thomas smith but they're extremely positive <laughs> nonetheless stop the steal i'm pretty sure we won and of course we need to remember that it won't stop at red states if Republicans get enough power, we'll have a federal ban and federal fetal personhood for come and over personhood for come mm-hmm. and over. If the good team doesn't D the fuck up and vote in every election. And I've said this before. I'm saying it again. Vote intelligently. And if there's any confusion about what I mean when I say vote intelligently, don't take my word for it. How about how about this? Ask Everyone you know who has a uterus, what that might mean. I'm guessing most of them will tell you that refusing to vote for Hillary Clinton and trying to send a message with a protest vote wasn't worth their bodily autonomy. No, yeah, no. And and something I think a lot of people miss about this situation is that, like, Democrats actually did hear that message of that protest vote, right? You, you hear people did it work? Co- constantly complaining about, oh, why aren't Democrats acting on this or that super progressive policy? And it's because the people who want those things have proven themselves to be unreliable voters who aren't worth fighting for right. at a party level, right? Like, yeah. we do nothing on this show to court Trump voters, as an example, because, like, we don't want their support on the skeptocrat, and we couldn't have it even if we wanted it. They're so, not listening. That's why I'm talking to protest voters right now. Right, exactly. exactly. So, like, if if you actually look at what the Democrats are doing, they're actually doing plenty of stuff for the issues for their consistent base, right? The people who will vote for them, right? The fact of the matter is that telling someone they're going to lose your support the instant you feel entitled to have another temper tantrum, it it doesn't motivate them to follow your agenda. Yeah. And if you're thinking, I'm not going to compromise my principles and vote for a Democrat if they're not progressive enough, um, what you need to do is think better. Yep. (laughs) I, I want more progressive candidates, too. But politics in a democracy, which we have, sort of, it's very literally made of compromise, though. That's what democracy is. Yeah. It's made of compromise. That's what politics is in a democracy. That's the whole thing. Nobody gets exactly what they want. That would be impossible, statistically. The entire process is about getting as close as possible to what you want. And the team of theocratic bigots is playing that very simple game way better than the rest of us right now. The rest of us as a whole, anyway. So... Think about the victims of what just happened and consider making a compromise on their behalf. I'm confident people are capable of being intellectually honest and modifying their position. I know that's true 
because I've heard from a bunch of them and because we saw a record turnout for Joe Biden, despite being the least progressive Democrat yeah. in the 2020 primary. Except for maybe Michael Bloomberg, but I'm not was, counting him. I was going to say, well, yeah. Does, yeah. does Bloomberg count? He does not count as a Democrat. Fuck that. So bottom line, if there's any silver lining to this disaster, I'm really I'm trying to find a silver lining. If there's one, I'm really hoping it's going to come in the form of a giant swell in pro-choice voter turnout. Blue wave, baby. Yes. And lots of Republican analysts are scared of exactly that. They're talking about it. So let's justify their fear. Whatever they're afraid of, we should be doing exactly that as Agreed. much as possible. Agreed, Heath. Hey, do you know what else they're actually afraid of? Oh, we and should probably throw on that note, beep, we're going to yeah. take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Hey, podcast listener. As you know, if you listen to our show a bunch, we try to do most of our show's ads as fun little skits, and I promise we got some of those coming up in the episode, but we also know that a lot of you are deeply affected by the news of the past two weeks, and if you're feeling hopeless or sad or unsure of how to move forward, therapy can help. A therapist can give you a place to vent, the tools you need to deal with what you're feeling, and a safe person to go to when you might not have others to confide in. And one of the places to get therapy is BetterHelp Online Therapy. Since we started advertising with them, we've had literally dozens of listeners write to us to say that they found an amazing therapist through their service. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat-only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's affordable, financial aid is available, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Plus, they have a wide variety of expertise available, so if you need someone who's LGBTQ friendly or isn't going to tell you the solution is Jesus, they can help you find that. And last but not least, our listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash skeptocrat. That's betterhelp.com slash skeptocrat. And we're back. Next up in headlines in On the Legislate News. If news of the past couple of weeks has got you feeling hopeless, no matter the results of this year's elections, I would encourage you to examine the actions of the New York State Legislature this week, which proved that when Democrats are in control, it actually doesn't really matter what the Supreme Court says about 14th century Saxon property law, because you can just pass new ones. And that's exactly what happened this week as New York passed legislation on concealed carry permits and initiated the process of enshrining the right to abortion in the state constitution. Yeah, that's good stuff. And some, some good actionable advice from Eli. If you have a uterus, be in New York now. Now, okay, in fairness, Eli's going to add a bit more advice in a minute about this um, this national democratic choosy thing that we have. We'll get there. <laughs> Yeah, it it does say everything you need to know about our national politics, though, when I'm like, right, yeah, pass legislation. I keep forgetting they're allowed to do that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, the state's new gun law bans the carrying of handguns in many public settings, such as subways and buses, parks, hospitals, stadiums, and daycares. Uh, oh, guns good. will also be off limits on private property unless the property owner specifically indicates that he or she expressly allows them. And at the last minute, I love this, lawmakers added Times Square to the list of restricted sites, which honestly seems pretty fucking reasonable, especially if you've ever been stuck behind someone in Midtown while they stop to take a selfie. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's a weird example. I feel like most New Yorkers like the law despite that angle about <laughs> Times Square. We, we either need guns in Times Square or a selfie ban for tourists. Yeah. One or the other. I'm good either way. Right. I, I, I'm honestly, given all the tourists, I'm surprised that wasn't covered under the daycare provision. <laughs> <laughs> so um, abortion rights are obviously going to take longer. The amendment needs to be passed through both houses in the state Senate and then put on the ballot during the general election, which may take more than a year. However, New York lawmakers took a first step on Friday when the legislature passed the Equal Rights Amendment, which, according to the New York Times, quote, along with guaranteeing the rights to abortion access to contraception, prohibited the government from discriminating against anyone based on a list of qualifications, including race, ethnicity, national origin, disability, or sex, specifically noting sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression, and pregnancy on the list of protected conditions, end quote. God, the entire Republican platform in my lifetime could be summed up as making us add new groups to the list of legally protected classes. Pretty much. That's what they do here. Yeah. 
So the good news is that there's something just like that New York State Legislature, but it's on a national level. Uh It's called the Senate and the House. And if you live in the United States, you will be asked to vote on that legislature's makeup this year. And again, like I know we've already talked about it. I don't want to be a broken record. Wait, is it an election year? It is. Yes. Oh, it's always an election year. Yeah. Right. And look, I don't want to be a broken record. I know we've talked about this a lot, but like if we show up, they cannot steal our government from us. Right. Okay. In 2020, huge turnout. That was 66% of the electorate. Right. Okay. It's a fucking scooge over half. We bump that up and there's no such thing as a red state. And this Supreme Court becomes as powerless and useless as their dicks. <laughs> Yeah, even with our fucked up voting system, with the Electoral College, we could have prevented Donald Trump. Joe Biden did win. We can do that. Yep. And in Florida news, when a political party finds its views have been on the wrong side of history for centuries, the only morally defensible thing to do is to change those views. But that'd be a whole big thing. So Republicans have opted instead to change the history. And educators in the state of Florida are raising alarms about just how bad it's gotten under GOP substandard bearer Ron DeSantis (laughs) in response to a civics boot camp for public school educators that contained more brainwashing and indoctrination than you'd expect from, you know, a regular boot camp. Some teachers are speaking out about the Christian nationalism undergirding DeSantis' entire approach to public education. Okay, civil disobedience in Florida includes teaching things that are true that's where we are yeah yeah. (laughs) i don't know if this experience is universal but did you guys have that one teacher who now looking back was a fucking nutbag right Mm -hmm. he'd say stuff like in my case jewelry is named after jewish people or tell you that dragons are real and historical fact florida would like everyone to be that teacher from my sixth grade math class yep (laughs) So, okay, so the boot camp in question isn't actually mandatory, but, you know, public school teachers are chronically underpaid. They get an extra 700 bucks for attending this thing, plus one random teacher gets a $3,000 bonus, because what's the fun in getting paid if there's no mystery to it, right? (laughs) Deny evolution in the next 10 minutes, and we'll throw in a tote bag. Right, yeah. What? Is DeSantis' policy. Anyway, during the boot camp, middle school teachers were told that it was a misconception that the nation's founders wanted a strict separation of church and state. They were also given teaching material that pointed out how George Washington and Thomas Jefferson eventually repudiated slavery without mentioning that both of them owned slaves. Like George Washington repudiated it in his fucking will, right? And worked to enshrine a government that would legally protect the practice for another 89 years. In the, in the words of Broward County teacher Richard Judd speaking to the Washington Post, quote, the state of Florida right now is geared towards pushing some particular points of view. And, quote, the thesis they ran with is that there is no real separation of church and state, end quote. Mr. Judd also said on his tour of Auschwitz, this seems like a not super fun place to hang out. End <laughs> quote. I, I feel like we could blame the Washington Post more than Mr. Judd. I have a feeling he said other stuff that they decided not to print, too. <laughs> Now, of course, Florida's governor denies the charge and instead invokes the I'm rubber, you're glued defense by insisting that his revisionist standards are, quote, promoting civics in history that is accurate and that is not trying to push an ideological agenda, end quote, and that students in Florida schools will be, quote, learning the real history, learning the real facts, end quote, (laughs) unless that history and those facts pertain to gayness, in which case they ain't learning a goddamn thing. But president of the Broward Teacher Union, Anna Fusco, warned that the training session told educators to present only one side of history and, quote, then they kind of slipped in a Christian values piece, ignoring the fact that this country is made up of so many different cultures and religions, end quote. Sorry, just circling back. The real facts? <laughs> yeah. Okay, quick grammar lesson for Ron DeSantis while we're on uh, the education topic. The word fact shouldn't need an adjective like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nope. Uh, Fun fact, if you think you've discovered a new truth that everyone needs to learn, you're either a scientist or a tyrannical government. Yeah, right. 100% of the time. You're doing one of those whiteboard videos on fucking parlor. Get out of here. (laughs) The real facts. Of course, but K through 12 is not the only education DeSantis is actively trying to fuck students out of. Uh, Watchdog groups are also raising alarms about the chilling effect his new educational standards are having on academic freedom in Florida's colleges and universities as well. The Stop Woke Act, or Stop With Our Kids Education Already, Conscientious Teachers, presumably. (laughs) That's so much better. So much better. (laughs) Right? 
Anyway, that went into effect on Friday and already faces a legal challenge from University of Central Florida professor Robert Casanello. Um, He teaches classes in the civil rights movement, Jim Crow and Emancipation of Reconstruction, and argues that the law will, quote, restrict his ability to accurately and fully teach these subjects, end quote. You think? Sure will. Well, yeah, right. That lawsuit's tricky because that's both illegal and the point of the fucking law. (laughs) Right, because woke, when used by conservatives in this context, is a euphemism for knowing the non-mythological parts of American history. Hey, if the 14th Amendment is too woke for yeah, you, right? Uh, you're two-thirds of the Supreme Court, and yeah. I hope you die. <laughs> yeah. Okay, honestly, I would like this entire case to be just them trying to teach that class without breaking their own law. <laughs> right. So Jim Crow laws... <laughs> I got goodbye, everybody. No, it it did not. (laughs) May have. Yeah. And and look, there's a lot of greasy fucking moves DeSantis is making around Florida's university system from altering the tenure system to changing the accreditation practice to mandating annual viewpoint diversity surveys from students and faculties that make sure that wrong is getting equal time. And all of these moves are designed to put state government in control of what professors are allowed to say. The Harvard and Yale-educated DeSantis also derided the very idea of higher education by dismissing advanced degrees as, quote, a magic piece of paper which likely would have cost too much anyway, end quote. I mean, in Ron DeSantis's case, he's definitely right, so I can understand. Yeah, (laughs) right, right. No, but look, he, he did that while he was loosening the state's hiring practices with regards to educational requirements, and I'm very much behind this, us backing away from the you need a college degree for any job above Uber driver system that we have now. But when the clear goal is to denude the nation of well-rounded educations, it should still worry you. Yeah. Plus, some of us are very fond of our magic pieces of paper. Thank you very much. There you go. Yeah. And since, oh my God, it's all burning down around us as a universal sentiment at the end of our headlines, I suppose there's always a real easy transition to make for a word from our other sponsor this week, Policy Genius. Poverty traps. Get your poverty traps. Free poverty traps. Guys, guys, what are you doing in the Wendy's parking lot again? Oh, hey, Noah. We were just letting everyone know about poverty traps. Yeah, plus Michelle told us they're not doing refills on baked potatoes, and this is our protest. Fuck Why yeah, would to Michelle. They... You know, okay, you know what? It's, it's fine. What is a poverty trap? Oh, so a poverty trap are these things that are like built into society that can trap you or your loved ones into perpetual poverty. Perpetual poverty? Yeah, you know, like medical debt, MLMs, even just dying. Hold on a second. Dying can trap your family in poverty? Yeah, it can. With the percentage of people that are living paycheck to paycheck and the surprising cost of funerals and end-of-life medical care, if you're the sole breadwinner for your family, you could put them in serious financial danger with your unexpected death. Damn. Well, it's a good thing there's policy genius. Wait, what's... Policy Genius. Policy Genius is an insurance comparison website that makes it easy to compare quotes from top companies like AIG and Prudential in one place to find your lowest price. You can save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Just head to policygenius.com to get personalized quotes in minutes and find the right policy for your needs. The licensed agents of Policy Genius work for you, not the insurance companies. They're on hand through the entire process and help you understand your options so you can make decisions with confidence. Wow, that sounds great. Where do I go? Head to PolicyGenius.com to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Awesome, Noah. One less poverty trap, I guess. Now, will you guys leave the parking lot? I don't know. Is Michelle willing to budge on her potato policy? Great question. No, no, but she did hook up that hose to the side of the building. I think we're done here. Yeah, let's head out. And we're back. Next up in headlines, thanks to the J6 hearings... We've been learning exactly how much treason was happening with Donald Trump and his inner circle at the end of his term. I'm still not holding my breath for any real criminal consequences for Trump because, you know, laws aren't real anymore. But at the very least, America got to see the facts laid out. And one recent witness in particular won the goddamn internets last week. Of course, I'm talking about Trump's White House aide, Cassidy Hutchinson. As with most testimony about violent treason... Lots of the details. They were horrible and terrifying, of course. But we also got a few moments of very literal slapstick tragic farce. And we will get there. Yeah. Also, just a quick note that while Hutchinson's testimony is revealing and she's very brave for doing it, it's kind of important to remember that she's just like 
a Nazi who's willingly participating in the Nuremberg trials. Yes, let's keep, right. Let's keep her back pats to a minimum, huh? You're welcome. Not only was she working for that bastard, but she was still working for him in January. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But shit, funny stories. Okay, I'm not even going to get to that right away, though. I'm going to start with the horrible and terrifying stuff. According to Hutchinson, Trump and his lackeys, especially Rudy Giuliani, were fully aware that very literal domestic terrorists were showing up in droves on January 6th. She said, quote, I recall hearing the terms Proud Boys and Oath Keepers when Giuliani was around. Sorry, was the theory up till now that Trump was unaware of the well-armed white supremacists trying to overthrow the government in his name? Right, like Hitler just showed up to the Reichstag. Who the fuck are you guys? I'm here to pay my water bills. This is <laughs> but, but, but yes, though. Yes, that is precisely Trump's story. Yep. And sure, we, we know it's a lie, but there's an important difference between knowing it and proving it. I, or at least there used to be. Th- theoretically. Selectively. I was going to say. (laughs) Remember those? Temporary. Yeah, and just in case the very large presence of domestic terrorist groups wasn't enough of a problem, Hutchinson also confirmed that Trump was fully aware that they were armed and ready for violence, for sure. Trump was told by the Secret Service that the crowd at his Stop the Steal rally had rifles, body armor, bear spray, and spears. Spears. They had spears. But... He insisted on letting more people through the metal detectors to make sure the crowd at his stupid fucking rally would look extra large. Hutchinson heard Trump say, I don't fucking care that they have weapons. They're not here to hurt me. Jesus Christ. Spears. Which means somebody was just like, no, they're, these are decorative. We are a, a peaceful phalanx of protest or a group of protesters. Just yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, Spears. on the other side, though, it's kind of a bummer to know how incredibly easy it would have been to assassinate Trump. All you had to do is wear a machine gun and a T-shirt that said, not here to kill you, and he would have waved <laughs> you on through. <laughs> oh, well, he did say. <laughs> well, we also learned several other terrifying details. For example, in response to hearing that the rioters were chanting, hang Mike Pence, Trump told his chief of staff, Mark Meadows, that he doesn't care and that the rioters aren't doing anything wrong. And not surprisingly, we learned that both Mark Meadows and Rudy Giuliani were asking to be included in a blanket pardon for anything related to that insurrection. We also heard about multiple witnesses being pressured by Trump operatives to remain loyal in their testimony at the hearings. Wow. Or else what? That's like Al Capone (laughs) calling you from jail to tell you if you know what's good for you, you'll refill his commissary account. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like in at least one of these shakedowns, one of the witnesses had to ask if it counted as disloyal if they couldn't make it through the bullshit testimony with a straight face. Right. (laughs) Okay, I'll go with your story. But does does the stenographer write down when you go like that? Does that even get written down? Do they type when you turn your head and wink to somebody in the crowd? Do they, do they say wink in like brackets? Stop looking at the work. camera like Jim. Don't look at the camera like Jim. <laughs> that brings us to my favorite parts. So first we have Donald Trump having a temper tantrum and throwing his food against the wall like a toddler. Mm-hmm. This was in December of 2020. And then Attorney General William Barr had just made a public statement that the claims of election fraud were nonsense. Hutchinson testified that she heard a noise from the Oval Office that day in December of 2020 and walked in to see ketchup dripping down the wall and a shattered plate on the floor. And there was a valet cleaning it up who told her, yeah, he heard about the statement from William Barr and threw his lunch against the wall. It's exactly what it looks like. Okay, that's on them, though. You got to create a no thank you plate for them to put the food they don't want on. You can't just expect them not to throw. They don't understand. Okay, so, but let's at least acknowledge that the most childish aspect of this is the catch up, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in fact, if I'm not mistaken, that microphone we hid in the Oval Office has some audio from that moment. Here it is. Mm. Sir, sir, are you okay? Did you see what that bastard said? Mm. Oh, Barr, yeah, he said he, he said that you lost the election, sir. Right? No, not not mm. right. You, we we did lose that election <laughs> so far. But once my proud boys get there, they'll see. They're all gonna see. 
Sir, you need to get your head around. S- Sarah, please stop licking the ketchup off the walls. I'm wasting so, it. When my gone through the checkup, eat the walls. No. No, they're not, Mrs. Trump. Then how do we eat them? Oh. Yeah, Tyler, how oh. do they eat them? Oh. I'm going on lunch. This dude seems stressed. Cry? Get a massage. Oh. You want some? No. Good. <laughs> I'm so glad they're back. <laughs> and that brings us to Trump's limo ride mm-hmm. on January 6th. Hell yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. Here's the account from Cassidy Hutchinson. After giving a speech at his rally, Trump wanted to head to the Capitol where all the domestic terrorists were marching that he knew about. So he got in a limo with his Secret Service detail, but they told him it wasn't safe because the riot was already happening. So they were like, no, we're going back to the White House. Trump flew into a rage and yelled, I'm the fucking president. Take me to the Capitol now. (laughs) And he tried to grab the steering wheel. Jesus Christ. He thought he was going to like steer it to the right place against the wheel. It's crazy. (laughs) Speed for Mr. President. (laughs) So he grabs the steering wheel and that's when Robert Engel, the head of the security detail, grabbed Trump's arm and said, sir, sir, (laughs) you need to take your hand off the steering wheel, buddy. And that's when Trump lunged at Engel's throat with his other hand. (laughs) Well, thanks to the beautiful medium rare bone in ribeye steak with absolutely no ketchup that we put in his limo that had a recording device inside. It never got touched. We here at the Skeptocrat are able to give you exclusive never before heard footage of that moment. One more time. Let's roll that tape. All right. Everybody buckled in. Yes. Guys. I want my juice. What What did we say? Juice after buckles. Juice after buckles, exactly. Okay, here we go. Wait, wait. Tyler, Tyler, where are you going? We're supposed to go to the march. They could, they're going to make me king, Tyler. Turn the car no, around. Sir, no, they're not going to make you king. You know what? That's it. Give me the wheel. Sir, 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 stop. Give him the wheel, Tyler. God. Jack Wyler, give him the wheel. No, no, we are not overthrowing the government. You leave me no choice, Tyler. Grab my guy. Grab my guy. Get him. Sir, Grab my guy. Grab my guy. Get him. Grab my guy. Get him. Grab my guy. Pull out his windpipe like a wishbone. Grab my guy. Great. Oh, okay, great. Now we've crashed into a Wendy's. Can I get a bacon cheeseburger? Ooh, ooh me too. I want a Frosty. Yeah, make it three. Three Frosties and three bacon cheeseburgers. Got it. It's fun being back on the podcast again. Grish? And in good news, I know you might have missed it with all the right losing and theocracy enshrining last week, but Mm. this past Friday, July 1st, the most important person in America, nay, the world, (laughs) received their first vaccination against COVID-19. That's right, everybody. My baby is vaccinated. Yes, me and Anna are working on a musical number about it. No, she will not let me include the home addresses of Samuel Alito inside that musical number. Yeah, yeah, I know it's weird, but like, there's a spot along the spectrum where wishing people would get jabs becomes a felony. Oh, you sound just like her. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, in a decision that local parents are reporting took approximately 40 bajillion years, children six months and older are eligible to receive their vaccines, adding 20 million Americans to the vaccinatable population, though uptake is significantly lower among young children than it is among the general population. This is in part due to the fact that everyone is a fucking idiot and Mm -hmm. also due to the fact that COVID is less dangerous for young kids. It is, however, significantly more dangerous than, you know, drag queens reading storybooks and gay kisses on TV. So the priorities seem a little skewed on that one. Also, by the way, fun thing to do when you get your kid vaccinated, especially if there's going to be Christian people, like maybe in the next room, in the waiting room or something, right after your kid gets the shot, you have them say something like, Hail Satan, Prince of Darkness. What? Like right after they get (laughs) it. Yes. You want to get two lollipops? There's a way to get two. Bring a smoke bomb maybe as you're leaving. I don't know. True story. I actually said fuck yeah really loud and heartily. And I obviously offended the nurse who gave my son the shot. And I I just couldn't. (laughs) I tried so hard to muster up the like apology. But I was just like, I'm sorry. People like you did this. Okay. (laughs) Goodbye. I'm going to go sit in a chair. Hey, my 5G is really good right now. (laughs) I don't even need my wireless hotspot. (laughs) So, yeah. 
Uh, for the childless among you, I know this might not seem like a huge deal, but believe me, I speak for parents everywhere when I say that we are letting out huge sighs of relief this week. Now, all we have to worry about is armed right-wing terrorists and bodily autonomy and stuff. You know, normal, everyday parental worries we all share. Cool. Yeah, cool. right. Yeah, with school shootings still to look forward to. Exactly, yeah. And finally tonight, in Hill Rudy Day news, <laughs> Rudy Giuliani sought police protection on Sunday after his home was viciously bombarded by a newspaper armed youth on a bicycle. <laughs> this came after a trying weekend in which he had to summon the fire department over a viciously inspicened Dorito and had to call animal control to deal with an unusually aggressive cockroach in his garage. And all of this, of course, came less than a week after he was accosted at a shop right in Staten Island and brutally subjected to a padding in the third degree. Yeah. <laughs> so a, stupid. A, a dude literally tapped Rudy Giuliani on the shoulder to get his fucking attention, and Rudy called the cops and had the man arrested for assault. Because, you know, you can't have somebody arrested for calling you a scumbag, which is what actually happened. Yeah. Yeah. Also legal to say, uh, excuse me, sir, I think your face gasket is leaking motor oil <laughs> or like maybe black fish juice because you're literally the penguin from Batman. Please step out of the aisle so we can mop it up. Yeah. You're allowed to say that, too. Mm -hmm. I love that Rudy was like, you know what will save my destroyed reputation as a human being and ridiculous political clown calling the cops on someone like a TikTok Karen. I'm yeah. nailing it. Right. <laughs> yep. Right, so now at first Rudy described the incident like he was set upon by the fucking bear Jew. <laughs> in an interview oh, on talk no, Yeah, I'm right. Let's, you, let's take a minute to live in that visual, mm. right? But in an interview on mm. talk radio afterwards, he told the host, quote, All of a sudden I feel a shot on my back. Like somebody <laughs> shot me. I went like forward. Forrest but... Gump getting bit <laughs> by a snake? <laughs> Fuck. He says, he goes on to quote, I went forward, but luckily I didn't fall down. Lucky I'm a 78-year-old man who's in pretty good shape, because if I wasn't, I'd have hit the ground and probably cracked my skull, end quote. And then the New York Post obtained a video of the incident where very clearly the dude just pats Rudy on the back. Right, like, there's a half-ass FIFA-esque stumble afterwards, but there's no attack and there's certainly no shot. Uh, yes, it was very, my head went back and to the left. It did, I mean, yeah, okay, yes, the guy who tapped me was, was back and to the left. But it was basically a gunshot in Dealey Plaza from a Navy sniper. That happened Pretty to me. I mean, people, who are you going to trust? Video or the words of Rudolfo Giuliani, <laughs> former mayor of New York? It's so not watch the video. It's nothing. It's hilarious. It's nothing. Happened. Nothing. Now, the alleged back slapper, a ShopRite employee by the name of Daniel Gill, was arrested and charged with felony assault on the strength of Giuliani's testimony. But once the video was released, the charges were downgraded to misdemeanor charges of third degree assault, third degree menacing and second degree harassment, um, which <laughs> like are also nothing. bullshit charges. Of course, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, they were described by the Legal Aid Society, which is representing Gill, as inconsistent with existing law. Because yeah, yeah, because right, because it's not illegal to touch a person's back or call them a scumbag. Yeah, that's actually on the flag of Staten Island. It's embedded <laughs> in the culture to call people scumbags. Yes. Tap on the and, back, weirdly right. aggressively. Even. Yes, I I like that they thought they could compromise with a lesser crime that the guy didn't commit. Right, right. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. We you will you will charge you with changing lanes without signaling, and then no, no, we, there's no negotiation without a hostage. There's what are a video. About? What are you doing? Those are the rules. Just let me go home. <laughs> no, it's, so to his credit, by the way, current New York Mayor Eric Adams derided Giuliani's histrionics in a press conference last Tuesday where he reminded Rudy that falsely reporting a crime is, in fact, a crime, adding, quote, what if we didn't have the video? This person would have been accused with a serious crime when all he did was pat the guy on the back, end quote, which is a good fucking point. And to be clear, the dude's still being charged with a crime for patting a dude on the back. That's just, it's just not a serious crime. And, and, and we're talking about a guy who walked by Rudy fucking Giuliani the same day that SCOTUS overturned Roe. Right, like the fact that he didn't punch him on the inside of the skull <laughs> deserves some kind of honorary degree from a Buddhist monastery or something. Seriously, if that's me, I would have been riding a shopping cart at full speed with a yes! lance of baguettes if I right? couldn't find anything better. 
Heath, Heath, don't be silly. You would never waste a baguette like that. <laughs> no, they okay. sell mops. <laughs> the stale ones from outside, maybe. No, of course, uh, Rudy's son, Andrew Giuliani, who was vying for governor, if you define vying broadly enough, was happy to capitalize on the publicity. Uh, he tweeted out a condemnation in the wake of the incident that read, quote, we will not be intimidated by left wing attacks as governor. I will stand up for <laughs> law and order so that New Yorkers feel safe again. End quote. So, yeah, it's good to know that the inviolability of privileged people's shoulders will be high on your agenda <laughs> and all. But how the fuck are you going to say that you're not intimidated by left wing attacks? You're. You're call the cops level of intimidated even in the absence of attacks. <laughs> You're throwing yourself to the concrete when a car backfires levels of intimidated. And honestly, honestly, you should be. Yeah, I'm glad about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how often the Republicans can draw us a map to what actually scares them and will make them change their behavior. But I guess it's a few more times. <laughs> right, huh? they're not done yet. <laughs> Maybe you can get a computer to draw that map for us. <laughs> fucking assholes <laughs> and on that note we're gonna close it out thanks to no illusions thanks to eli bosnick thanks to that guy at Shoprite. what's his name fuck daniel yeah gill. daniel gill american hero danny g if you need something uh, something good about america to celebrate on the fourth of july uh, danny i'll g. give send go that motherfucker so hard <laughs> something good about staten island too he's, just like you oh, know yeah, diamond no. in the rough he's our also house. thanks to all the listeners who liked us on facebook Follow us on Twitter and send us feedback on the other various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening and please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, please feel free to send us gifts of money at our donation page at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like Ryan Torella, Eli's baby made me subscribe. Nice. Panzer. Remember, it sounds like you're calling my baby a slur that no one's aware of. <laughs> oh, the word panzer? Because yeah, you went, you went, Eli's baby made me subscribe. Panzer. Panzer. I said fucking nice panzer. That baby's a total panzer. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying it. Okay, well, thank you, panzer. Apparently, you're a slur in Eli's head or whatever, but thank you, panzer. I've always said that. <laughs> also, thank you to remember if it doesn't say micro machines, it's not the real thing. Also, Ratho, James Lamica, Auntie Sarah, Sean McDonald, Matt Faw, and Darren G, whose dicks and vaginas are so very beautiful. I'm sure you've heard it all before, but you never really had a doubt. I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now, Wonderwall. And whether or not you're feeling financially <laughs> benevolent like those, it's Oasis? Fuck! Yep. Mm -hmm. Financially benevolent like those fine, okay. If you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and the uh, Dear More Dick Jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Skating Atheist, God Awful Movies, d, &D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, all those other podcast apps, or the deep web. We just have one last thing, let's compliment that penist. Special thanks to Ryan Slonick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He is the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. Like a good hosing. You love a good hosing. Right. From Michelle? From Michelle? Yeah. Mish? Chow Chow? <laughs> Tough to shorten Michelle. I was really... Michelelele? I used 100% of my brain there. Okay, so you know those, you know, dram laws where, like, if a, a restaurant or a bar overserves somebody and then they drive away and they get into a car accident, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. restaurant and the bartender can get in trouble? What about yeah. Harvard and Yale? Yes, a Ted Cruz dram law. <laughs> yeah, Princeton, Ted Cruz, Harvard, Yale, Ron DeSantis, you're in trouble. Now, you, yeah. you did knowingly provide one Ted Cruz with, <laughs> with a degree. Let's get Andrew to help with that loss. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Juice after buckles is my name. Juice after buckles. <laughs> The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.